Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel, The History of Us. I am so excited to have you back here with me today. So today we are going to be continuing talking about the immigrants that have made a ginormous impact on U.S. history. Today I'm going to be sharing part of the story of one of my absolute favorite immigrants in U.S. history, the suffragist Rose Winslow. So again, thank you so much for coming back today. I am super excited to share the story with you. So let's get started. Rose Winslow was born in Poland with the name Ruzo Winklowska in 1889. She immigrated to the United States when she was a young child. Her father was a coal miner, and Rose worked in a dangerous hoistery factory for long hours when she was only 11 after she moved to Pennsylvania. There were no child labor laws, and she got tuberculosis because of this work when she was only 19. She had poor physical health throughout her life because of that. She actually ended up becoming an activist for the workers' rights movement because of this terrible experience she had. Rose testified to support women gained an eight-hour workday and spoke to President Woodrow Wilson about rights for working women in 1914. Eventually, Alice Paul, who was heavily involved in the women's suffrage movement, heard her speak and recruited Rose Winslow to the National Women's Party. Rose Winslow was one of the few working women in that party. Rose worked as a suffragist in San Francisco with Lucy Burns. She ended up picketing in front of the White House with Alice Paul when Woodrow Wilson was president. Rose and Alice and other picketers were arrested and jailed for seven months because of their picketing. They went on a hunger strike in 1917. Rose was the first to join Alice Paul in this hunger strike, which was because the government refused to acknowledge that they were actually political prisoners. Rose and the other suffragists were force-fed and Rose was force fed three times a day as a result. They all became very weak and ill. Rose wrote notes while she was in prison, which were smuggled out to her family, and eventually all the women were released. But Rose's notes had helped gain support for the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. Rose also went on a speaking tour in which she spoke to a mostly male audience at certain points. She was working to persuade the audience to support women's suffrage. She argued that achieving rights for women would help all workers. Here is an excerpt from her speech in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. This was called the RDA speech, and I believe it was part of the aforementioned speaking tour. Here is an excerpt from Rose's speech. I was a labor union worker before I began to get interested in women's suffrage. What convinced me of women's need for something more than they've got was the strike of the shirtwaist workers in New York City four years ago. I was helping in that strike. There were 50,000 children and young girls and women on strike in that industry then in New York. It was winter. Some of them were starving. Very few of them had enough food to eat or clothes to wear. I saw them go out in the snow and stand quietly and peaceably in front of the factories, picketing in defense of their jobs, but not molesting anybody. I was with them day after day after day. I saw big, fat, burly policemen in good, warm coats drive those little girls back out of those streets, arresting them in twos or threes. But I never could get a policeman to arrest the hired thugs and strong-armed men that the manufacturers had in the streets there, who clubbed and mauled those strikers. It happened again and again at my meetings. I saw it with my own eyes, and I always saw the policeman turn his head the other way to let those thugs finish their beating. If anybody got arrested, it was some little girl that was a witness. Day after day, things got worse. Some well-to-do women of New York, some college women from the university, turned to help us. By that time, some of the girls had gone hungry for a long time, and the cadets from the red light district have got into the way of going mornings to the halls and rooms where the strikers met for union meetings and passing out cards to those hungry girls, telling them to meet so-and-so on a certain corner and get an easy job where there was plenty to eat and lots of money and no strikes. The easy job that we know as the life of shame. We older women who saw this going on went to the police and tried to get a watch set on against these cadets. We brought charges against certain of these men, but do you think the police would arrest them? Not at all. Then, with the help of the well-to-do women, we sent a committee to Mayor Gaynor and told them that we had a list of college men and college women volunteers whom we wanted him to appoint for us special officers to go to these union meetings and break up the cadets' business. Would he do it? Not at all. We represent 60,000 organized workers. 
but they were all women markers. They had no votes. Gaynor was going to run again for mayor, and we couldn't give him any votes. If a men's union of 60,000 had asked Gaynor to appoint those college volunteers special policemen at no charge to the city, don't you think he'd have done it? Why, yes, in a minute. He was going to run again for mayor. He'd respect 60,000 votes. I came away that day, after Maynard Gaynor had refused us. I came away converted to women's suffrage. Women workers need every defense that a man worker has. And that is an excerpt from Rose Winslow's speech. So after the 19th Amendment was passed, we aren't really sure what happened to Rose Winslow. It is believed that she may have become an actress. An actress with Rose's birth name, Rosa Winklaska, is believed to have performed in certain Broadway shows, including Desire Under the Elms, Fashion, and The Spook Sonata in the mid-1920s. Rose was also a poet. She died in 1977, and unfortunately, I could find such little information on her that this is a very short biography video, and I think that it would be very hard for you to do your own research. So I am sorry about that, and I hope that this video can help with that gap. But alas, the five-minute video can't do much to teach you all about someone. So thank you so much. First of all, here are the resources that I used in this video. If you want to get in contact with me, please feel free to leave a comment at the end of this video. Comments are now open. Um, they're also open at the old video, so if you had something that you wanted to put on there too, please feel free to go back and do that. I will still check those. And um, if you want to reach out in a different way, you can always email me at abby at historyofus at gmail.com. Once again, that's abby at historyofus at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate you continuing to watch this YouTube channel. I know that the video intervals have not been the best as of late, but I am working on that. So have a great day. Thanks for watching.